This part of the desert of South Africa, where only a parched camel thorn tree relieves the endless parallels of time, space, and sky, surrounds like a rope of sand the richest diamond-bearing area in the world, an uneasy land where men, inflamed by monotony and the heat, sometimes forget the rules of civilization. Area Patrol, Thompson speaking. Give me Vogel, please. Commandant Vogel, we've just taken him. Forty minutes in all. We're searching him now for diamonds. Forty minutes, huh? Quite a record. My congratulations. And put yourself on the report when you return. You'll be fined a week's pay for allowing the man in the area at all. Thompson, one of the axioms for my department is this. It is impossible for any man to enter the prohibited area, even for 40 minutes. My job is to see that no diamonds are removed from the area. I'm not playing games. What is it? From the Herrero chief, sir. Report a number of their men want to sign a labor contract. That's nothing his job. Mr. Martingale's not back from Cape Town, sir. How many? About 100. They understand the regulations? You sign up for a year. No drinking. Why I can't imitate how you allow for buzz out, seven seminar, I don't give a yaga with you all. Did you want to have a front of a bunny car? I'm a bunny. I'm a bunny. I'm a bunny. I'm a bunny. Wives? Once a month. Was she in a car? A two man. I'm a child. I'm a child. I'm a child. Take them to Collins. Yes, sir. Come on. I'm a cutter. I'm a cutter. Yes, what is it? Exit permit for your signature, sir. Pearson separator form and arm injury. No fluoroscope check. You know better than that. The X-ray's broken down, sir. Well, repair it. Fly someone in if necessary. I have an OK from Doc Hunter. He just did it up. And very neatly, too. Take him down the hall and explain to him the physical dangers of hiding a diamond in an open wound. Incidentally, Pearson, Dr. Hunter's bandages are never neat. They have a certain alcoholic sloppiness about them. Come on, Get it over there! Get over there! 
up your fat car. How soon can you get my gear off? Look, mister. If you think all I gotta do is nuzzle to a thousand tons of cargo and... How soon can you get my gear off? Yes, sir. Fasten your cargo first. And manage. Get that way swinging. Come on, get it down. Hey, send up that passenger cargo next. Hey, boy. Hey, you. Go on back. Take care of passenger's gear. You understand? Now, go dark. Take care of gentleman's gear. Understand? Why they hire a stupid Arrero who can't understand English? I guess his mother didn't bring him up right. <laughs> I warned you not to come back here. I thought you'd be gone, Vogel. Promoted to a little diamond stat all your own. I was waiting for you. And your blue jacket, the one with my bloodstains, is that waiting too? Don't lose your temper in this heat, Commandant. It's bad for the blood pressure. What do you want here? That's my business. Come on, let's get this stuff out of here. Lake. A regrettable accident. Sorry your equipment is ruined, Mr. Davis. Don't lose your temper in this heat, Davis. It's bad for the blood pressure. Vogel, I came back here telling myself I'd forgotten what this place did to me. But all I wanted was my license back. I came back here telling myself that what happened before was a regrettable accident. I'm back, Vogel. Now I know what I want. Thanks to you, the hunter and the guide is gone. I'm back to get something I've already paid for. Price has doubled. So long, pig. My blue jacket, Davis, I saved it. And all I want is an excuse to use it. Thank you. I thought you didn't speak English. I don't speak English much to many people. I see your point. I may be able to use a boy that don't speak English much. I work for you. Good. But you better go see Doc Hunter first and have him take care of this. Tell him Mike Davis sent you. He remember the name. Call Mr. Martingale in Cape Town. Try to pass this club first. Yes, sir. And insist that I talk to him. Diamond stat to Cape Town. Perseus Club. I'm sorry, Mr. Martingale cannot be disturbed. No, I'm very sorry, but the membership committee is meeting. Thank you very much. The next and last application is that of Mr. Paul Vogel of uh, Diamond Stat. Sponsor? Gentlemen. There's no need to reiterate all the splendid services that Mr. Vogel has rendered the club in the past. Yeah, yeah. Yet three times previously, his membership application was rejected by a single black ball. Most regrettable. Therefore, I've asked Mr. Martingale to make a personal plea. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm quite sure you are all aware that Paul Vogel is the grandson of an impoverished German colonist, that he started with uh, none of the advantages that all of us have enjoyed, and that it is by his own a constant effort that he has become a person of stature and importance. In regard to our personal relationship, I can honestly say that every day he has worked under me has been a distinct pleasure. Gentlemen, I have no more to say because, well, I am confident how each of you will vote. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we may pass the voting box. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Membership application rejected. No further business, gentlemen. Meeting adjourned. Sorry, Martingale. Now, this makes my going back to Diamond Star doubly distasteful. Mm. Are you joining us this evening, Parker? No, I'm afraid I can't. I'm meeting Mrs. Parker at the station. We'll leave in an hour for a business trip up country. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mr. Martingale. Yes? Urgent, sir. Put him on. Mr. Martingale is ready. Oh. Hello, Paul. Sorry to interrupt your holiday, but your instructions were to report anything of an unusual or unexpected nature. Mike Davies has returned. I had no intention of making the same mistake again, although I scarcely regard it as a mistake. I felt I should inform you as to what my course of action will be. Your course of action will be no action whatsoever until I return. Unless, of course, you should be so foolish as to try to enter the prohibited area. I'll be up by plane in the morning. Uh, uh, by the way, what happened to my membership application? Oh, I'm very sorry, Paul. I'm afraid some wretch has blackballed you again. Better luck next time. I come as imba zimba zio, I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio, I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio, I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio. I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio. I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio. I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio. I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio. I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio. I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio. I come as imba zimba zi. I come as imba zimba zio. See him there. I come I come Mr. Martingale, Mr. Parker's secretary calls from his office. He's supposed to meet Miss uh, Suzanne or Renault, uh, daughter of a rather important French stockholder here. But he's been detained and asked if he could entertain her until he arrives. Until he arrives? Earlier today, he told me he was going up country. Tell me, Jacques, is there any other unescorted girl but uh, this one? No, sir. Jacques, I'm indebted to you. Or I may never forgive you. I beg your pardon. I don't know what you want, monsieur. But I do know that if you are not gone in five seconds, I'll call the head waiter. He will tell you that my name is Martingale, and that Mr. Parker has appointed me his eager alternate. Oh, Mr. Martingale, I'm so sorry. My fault entirely. Now, would you like to join our party? Oh, if you don't mind, I'd prefer a taxi. Perhaps some other place. No, just my hotel. My car's outside. Oh, thank you, but I'm staying across town at the Royal. Oh, that happens to be my hotel, too. And I'm tired of all this nonsense anyway. In that case. I'll take you along with pleasure. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Come on, what about it? Oh, it's not so late. I have a little headache. Your champagne's good for that. Oh. You will excuse me. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night. What's the 
the matter? Oh, I, I thought I had my key, but I don't seem to be able to find it. I'll go to the desk. Oh, don't worry. I can call from your room. I'll do it for you. Thank you. I'm giving you so much trouble. Prerogative of a beautiful woman. If you take one more step, I, I'll scream. In any case, I'll scream, Mr. Martingale. Unless you pay me a hundred pounds. I suppose this is what I deserve for forgetting my age. But I am unmarried. Why should I pay? The directors of your company, perhaps. I can always clear myself if it reaches court. hundred pounds. The lawyers with the loan should come to that. Not to mention the bad publicity and the time you waste. Then, don't forget, there's always a jury. <laughs> oh, of course, if you're a man of principle... I take it you're quite experienced. The German is brutal. The Frenchman cries l'amour. The American is hoping for the cavalry to come. And what do Englishmen do? They pay. You know, I really should dislike you for this. But that doesn't concern me. You must have been such a sweet girl once. Tell me, what happened? The war? Frenchman? German? An American. And that time, I kept hoping for the cavalry to come. Yes, yes, I think you'll do very well. The stupid ones always try to get to the door. My dear young lady, I happen to know that Mr. Parker left town early this afternoon and couldn't possibly have sent that message. I also knew that I was walking into a trap. A very clever one. What are you going to do? Call the police? The police? Heavens, no. A hundred pounds, you said. How would you like five hundred? I know my stock in trade. I'm not worth it. The market's rising. An old friend has just arrived in Diamond Stud, so I have a job for you. A job? Not so. What kind of a job? To ask him a question, to get him to answer. What kind of question? Michael, darling, now tell me where the diamonds are, in your own sweet way, of course. How do I know you'll pay? Have you ever seen a more honest face? Very well, then. Shall we say half the money down? Oh, that's much better. I'll take the job. Good. Now, do you want to kiss me? Mm, no. I think not. You better keep your kisses for emergencies. Uh, but uh, tell me, why should a young woman with your talents be driven to such extremities as this? There is an extra charge for my life story. Well, my dear, we have a plane to catch early tomorrow, so I think I'd better pack my bag. But uh, you can fix yourself a drink if you like, Miss... Uh, Miss... Oh, no. Suzanne to you, Mr. Martingale. Fred. Suzanne, to you. Fred. <laughs> Holiday, Mr. Martingale. Very nice of you, Miss me, Paul. My fat company. But none so beguiling as I bring you now. Mademoiselle Suzanne Renault, may I present Mr. Paul Vogel, the head of our police bureau? How do you do? Mademoiselle Renault is the niece of one of our largest French stockholders. Forgive me, Mademoiselle. I'm a little overwhelmed by such beauty. Well put, Commandant.
consider this place for a minute, if you will. It often reminds me of the interior of a whale's belly. You sure get around? It's only an intellectual association, of course. But it's just from the whale's sordid interior that we scavenge the base for the most exciting perfumes. And that, in turn, we, we confuse with, with desirability, with virtue, with great passion. Say, why are you here? I mean, you, I, any of us. Why do we stay here in Darmanstadt, huh? Simply because we are infatuated. Yes. <laughs> infatuated. Plucking at the skirts of this woman, this, this desert, this heartless courtesan. But we, we stay here, eternally hopeful for some small glittering favor. <laughs> Amazing place, this, this place here in a desert where, where the gems lie just a few inches below the surface, free. Free for the taking, were it not for certain unfortunate restrictions. Here, go away. You'll spoil the rhythm. Dr. Hunter's famous prescription for pickling the heart. One injection every 15 minutes. Rhythm is very important. Doctor. Michael. Whiskey and soda. You did a good job on my boy, Doctor. Did a good job on you, Michael. Scar's almost gone. Why not? Had almost two years to heal. Why did you come back? I had business with Martingale. And? Now I'm in business for myself. I'm making a survey. Which of Vogel's boys drinks the most, owes the most, and... Henry. What's happened to our friend Thompson? He deserted you for Oscar. I couldn't say, Doctor. He's drinking too much, Henry. Far too much. Saw him sitting in Oscars this afternoon. He was already three parts elephant. He's probably still there. The desert must be getting him. I'm sorry to hear that. Thanks, Doctor. Go play poker here? Uh, should be starting soon. Thanks. Take the diamond itself, for instance. Carbon, suit, chemically speaking. And yet, the hardest of all matters. So hard, in fact, that whatever it touches must suffer. Glass, steel, the human soul. Why don't you go sell your rug someplace else? I heard a curious story the other day, Mr. Davis. It's about a young man, a, a hunter who used to make his living around here as a guide until, uh, until he got into trouble. What kind of trouble? Oh, it seems he took an impetuous gentleman somewhat beyond the main hunting party. This gentleman, he, he was obsessed by one idea. He wanted to shoot a lion. So one night, they, they camped quite near to a prohibited area, and, and to amuse the gentleman, he started to tell him some of the tales of the prohibited diamond area. Perhaps the one about the clerk. You know, the clerk that made a quick dash past the barrier and scooped up a bushel or so of diamonds. They're lying only a few inches under the sand. Then he fled to Angola and from there to England, and there he's supposed to be living now like a fabulous prince. At any rate, in the morning, when the guide woke up, this gentleman was gone, past the barrier into a prohibited area. Is this interesting? It's interesting. Yes. Well, eventually he found him delirious, fantastic as it sounds, wallowing, but wallowing in a virtual bed of diamonds. 
He got him back, but the two fell into the hands of the Diamond Police and the impetuous gentleman who so badly wanted to shoot a lion died babbling incoherently. Poor gentleman. What happened to the guard? Huh? Oh. He was badly beaten by the police and then he was released after a time and sent packing. But apparently, he has never disclosed the location of the diamonds. The curious part about the story, as it was told to me, is that this young man, this, this guide, he's supposed to be right here in diamonds at this very moment. His purpose, of course, you can easily guess. Have you ever done any hunting, Mr. Davis? Once or twice. I was only thinking if, uh, if you ever meet this young man, this guide, he might deliver a message for me. Saying what? Oh, saying, uh, saying that I'm here, free as the wind, fountain of extraordinary knowledge, splendidly corrupt and eager to be of profitable service. Where would he find you? That wouldn't be difficult. Never heard of him. Excuse me, please. You see, they and I, we slightly disagree about a man's privilege to, to occasionally sell or buy a few little diamonds until we meet again. Good luck. Keep out of the draft. After you, sir. Don't be so rude. Don't push me. Bring me another whiskey and soda, waiter. Yes, sir. There's your quality. Hello, Michael. You're looking so much better than when I saw you last. It was a long rest. Oh, well, forgive me, Mr. Davis, Miss Reno. She's the niece of one of our stockholders. How do you do? Hello. Miss Reno has come here to see for herself the irresistible glamour of Africa. And the men who live in it. Really? Well, Mr. Martingale, I thought you told me I'd find this place quite dull. If I like young, rude Americans, I should be devoted to them and start for life. Well, I'm afraid Michael is a little jaundiced about the ladies. It's uh, very common amongst professional hunters and guides. I suppose as hunters, they feel that uh, they ought to do the hunting. A hunter? Well, then perhaps... Retired. And so young. No, he's not retired, my dear. He's just entering the diamond business. He's working for you? I'm working for me. Michael, may I say something quickly? I regard this incident of two years ago as ancient history. I hold nothing against you. I regret what happened, and I'm willing to see that you get your license back if you will tell us where the diamonds are. Martingale, I'm dead from Cape Town to the Belgian Congo. I'm an undesirable, a clinker. I can't get a job and I can't get a passport to go anywhere else. And you are the one man that can help me to get my license. That's why I came back here. But now you're a little too late. Yesterday might have been different. Vogel, I didn't like what that smiling sadist did to me at the dock, or what he did to a friend of mine. I'm sorry to hear this, Michael, but what can I do? Not a thing, Martingale, not a thing. After the reception Vogel gave me, I've forgotten where the diamonds are. Have you? Cheers. You'll have to do better, my dear. Come along. Davis hates Fogel, and Fogel hates him. Now, the one thing Vogel treasures more than his house, and you must see his house, my dear, is the hope of someday beating Mike Davis to death. You know, I find the commandant most charming, and I intend to spend a good part of the evening with him. So, why don't you invite him to our table? 
Davis is your business. Diamonds are your business, but men are mine. Tell me, have you ever gone fishing? Hmm? What did you use for bait? Hmm, small mackerel. Fish. So, if you were going to catch a man, what would you use for bait? You know, my fondest hope was that you'd find the diamonds. But this, to set each of them against the other, the memory of it will warm me in my old age. Oh, hello, Paul. Would you like to join us? You like it? Uh, come. Enjoying Diamond Stud. Even more than I expected. Do sit down, Paul. Why, thank you. Would you like to have some champagne with me? Oh, that would be very nice. Perfectly cold, cool as the desert night. Mademoiselle Renault, you must allow me to show you the desert at night sometimes. It's more beautiful here than anywhere else in the world. And I'd like you to see my house. I think it would please you. We must do that sometime. Do that which Diamond Stud never had before. If you'll excuse me. Why must we wait, Martingale? Michael? Yes. Oh, how else can he lead us to the diamonds? If you allow me to persuade him. Oh, now, Paul, you had your way once with them and you failed. Have you forgotten? No, I haven't forgotten. That because of the report of my failure that someone sent in, I failed to get a district of my own. Oh, my dear Paul, must we always talk shop? Oh, by the way, Paul, when are you going to apply for the Perseus Club in Cape Town again? A day you'll be absent from a voting on membership. This is a very dangerous thing to do, Mr. Davis. You are then. Cautious. I, I thought you might want company. I'm used to being alone. Oh, yes, that's right. A hunter. And you're a stockholder's niece. One cannot be too particular when one is in need of employment. Well, sometimes the profession makes demands that I don't care to fulfill. Don't you think that depend on the employer? Yes. Look, I'm not for hire. You are tense, Mr. Davis. A man who is tense makes mistakes. You're too worried, Miss Reno. You need a friend. Just where do you fit into that? I could be a friend. I like courage. What do you like, Mr. Davis? Honesty. Game open? Yes. He's insulted her. You'll apologize to Mademoiselle Renault. Please, please. Go away, pig. Get out. Vogel, I got a little business here at the poker table. You know, all I need to make you sorry I ever came back is a little dough. I might even play with you. Play you for a miserable ten shillings? It wouldn't be worth my while. Perhaps you'll allow me to remedy that. Stakes are 500 pounds. Shall we say 750? Ah. Shall we say 750? Cards. Cards? Three. I'll stand pat. Check. Two. 
Let's make it a hundred, Vogel. Got to show your openers, didn't you? You should have stayed. You'd have beaten me. Be bluffing, Mr. Davies. What'll you pay to find out? Straight. How high? bed. Check. Five hundred more. And a new deck of cards. How many, Mr. Davis? One. I take one, too. Beat my flush. With pleasure. Full house. Aces. Cash it for me, will you? Yes. It's a victor. Thank you. Let's celebrate. Carl, some more champagne. Oh, please. I do not really want champagne. Not here. Well, I scarcely know what to suggest. This is the only decent place. I thought perhaps you would like to show me your house. There can't be a place like it for a hundred now. A thousand. It's all been assembled with great care. There's only one thing that 
I want it that I've been waiting for for a long time because I'm a perfectionist. Nothing of value is gained easily. How beautiful. Isn't it? It needs a woman of your taste to appreciate its magnificent beauty. Here, look. Sarah, 1782. 1782. There are only two others like it in the whole world. No, the perfection of the enamoring. How lovely. I had to wait for it for seven years. My representative in Paris was a fool. He let himself be outfit by a Frenchman. But you were stubborn. Yes, I waited. Finally, in 39, I learned through a contact had in the French Sûreté that the sister of the owner was seized in Germany. It would take all his money and more to get the old lady out. So, I made my bid. And he had to accept. It was a bargain. I never saw such a collection. All my life, I believe that if you were willing to take the time and energy, you could have anything you desired. All my life, I saw perfection. It seems perfect. Now it is perfect. Pardon the interruption, but I thought the lights were still on. Vogel, I'm a coward. Hit me and I'll drop this. You're wasting your time. Pick a card, any card. Mademoiselle Renault, would you mind waiting in the other room? No, let her stay. She wants to see the irresistible glamour of Africa, and particularly the men who live in it. What do you want? Vogel, a gentleman, never marks aces with his fingernail. How dare you suggest anything? I don't suppose I could prove this to a, well, to a jury, but I think Martingale would listen. And he'd be disappointed in you. Besides, it happens to be his money. Money won't do you any good. Well, I know just the spot where it would. So come on, Vogel, quick, 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds. Please. You've got me at your mercy, haven't you? That's right. The keys to your car. I sent my chauffeur home. Come on, Red Riding Hood. Time to leave Grandma. My boss. I don't like the way you got it. So long, Peggy. Paris, you got stop and go signals on the street corner. 
Maybe used to playing with traffic cops. But Vogel's no traffic cop. There are no stop and go signals here. They haven't even put the roads in yet. Maybe that's why I thought you were the cavalry. And not a minute late. What? I mean, thank you for the rescue. I didn't come after you. You just happened to be there. That's all? That's all. I, too, like honesty. When did you get that car? You wouldn't be interested. What do I have to do to prove that I am? I want to be your friend. I'm being honest with you. It happened two years ago. When I asked myself how long ago that was, it adds up to a century. I was a desert hunter and guide. I liked being what I was. The problem was a thing you sell, not something you... not something you live with while it slowly chokes you to death. I'd taken this fool Ingram two days east of the main party, lion hunting in the scrub country. We had no luck, and somehow the failure to see more my fault, because I never really liked them. Better turn back in the morning. Pretty close to the prohibited area, and those boys are kind of touchy. It wouldn't be bad to do this and come up with a handful of diamonds. Or a bullet in your back. From what you tell me, a man could slip into the area, and with any luck, either lie down or pinch yourself, because you're already asleep. he'd already decided to try his luck. He'd taken the better of the two horses. And the hoof prints headed straight for the prohibited area. Traveling fast for a man who didn't know the desert country. Too fast for his horse. By this time, I knew my own animal wouldn't be good for much longer. And I was feeling the heat in the distance myself. But sometimes an act that begins in stupidity has to go on, mile by mile until it reaches its logical end. Traces of the bottom of a giant river that flowed a thousand centuries ago. I knew the end couldn't be far away, and it wasn't. There he lay, hugging the earth as if it would save him. And there it was. 
Dawes that I first saw them. A million to one shot, and Ingram hit the jackpot. A bushel of dull pebbles that didn't even glisten in the sun, but worth enough to buy the souls of a thousand men. Still, I didn't take them. Don't ask me why. There are lots of reasons why a man won't take what isn't his. <laughs> Five hours for two days. Time was a circle that had no end. I know the sun smashed into my brain the message that I'd never be able to make it back. Still, I had to keep going. Before he died, Ingram must have babbled of what they found in his fist. But he didn't live long enough to tell them where he found it. The Commandant had to know in a hurry, for Martingale was away, and this was his big chance to prove himself a hero. So to soften me up, Vogel and his men went to work on me, with their fists and their boots, while I was still out of my mind, and couldn't tell them even though I would have been willing to. That was his big mistake. Well, that's it. A beating like that does something to you. When I came around, I wouldn't have told them my name. Didn't feel any different then. I don't feel any different now. Except now you want the diamonds. Let's say I want the diamonds. Shall we go? Mike, it's impossible. You could never get away with it. Please, leave this place. I thought I made it clear to you. I am staying. How long do you think Martingale will hold Fogel back? Until he's sure there's no chance of my leading him to the diamonds. Exactly. Please listen to me. It's over now. You are still alive. Be satisfied. It's not enough just to be alive. To sleep and to move. When they beat me for something I didn't do, it hurt in a way blows never did before. The pain won't leave until I get what I already paid for. When will you learn that you cannot get along that way? You know of another way? Maybe I don't, because I've been lucky. But maybe you are not the only one who has been hurt by life. Of course I'm not. But you've got to fight back. For a time? And then you realize it does no good. So you shrug your shoulders and say, if that's the way of the world, I shall live that way. I'd rather be dead. You will be. Because those people are dead inside anyway, sick or rotten or dead. Mike, please do what Mr. Martingale asked you to do. You just don't understand, do you? Come on, let's go. I got things to do. Mr. Martingale is busy. Oh, wait. Hello, Michael. Sorry, I didn't hear you knock. The door was open. I was, 
Considering splitting up this diamond, it's the starlight one. Care to give me your opinion about it? Out of my class. Like Miss Renner? She's still a stockholder's niece. Dear me, I thought you felt differently. You can see at the party I'm giving tonight. I wasn't invited. Well, you're invited. Sorry, other business. Michael, you were lucky yesterday and you didn't know it. You were lucky yesterday. You didn't know it. Thanks. Oscar, this makes it fire for tonight. Right, Rosebud. <laughs> Good evening, Thompson. Good evening. Give me a double. Well, he got all night. We'll go on duty in two hours. But I wouldn't drink so much. You ever spent eight hours in the half track? Not yet. And you've never had your eyes fall out, or your throat close up, or your guts turn inside out from gas fumes, sand, and heat. It's your squirrel cage. Why'd you pick it? I ran a tank during the war. I went to bed with a 75 millimeter for three years, but now I sleep alone. Know of a job that pays better? Oscar. Yes? What do I owe you? Three drinks. That's the smallest you've got? Afraid so. Sorry. Uh... I can change that. I've got something smaller. Thanks. I found some place where I can break this and pay you back. a few minutes with you. I'm sorry, but I'm busy. Please, it's important. Oh, very well. I'll have to clean you the later, Doctor. Well? I, uh, I asked you out here to, to explain about last night. That seemed quite clear to me. Mademoiselle Renault. I'm afraid I have a bit of a headache for this sort of thing. There was no such thing intended. Sorry, I misunderstood. Now, shall we go inside? Please. Suzanne, why do you think I wanted you to see my home last night? Why do you think I asked you to come out here now? From the moment you stepped off the plane, I knew I had met the one woman that I wanted to be my wife. Suzanne. I'm afraid the answer is no. Why? Because of my manners? They have been perfect. Isn't my house as fine as those you're used to? Far better. What is it, then? Well, it's just that I'm not attracted to you. What's wrong with me? Let me go. Answer me. <laughs> my 
Davis was right. You are a pig. Your friend Davis won't have the chance to teach you any new names to call me. to let Vogel have his way with Michael. It's a little late for that. He's already after him. Thompson, I hear you made a new friend. If I did, I, I was off duty. When you work for me, Thompson, you're never off duty. What did you and Mike Davis talk about? We just had a drink. Just a drink, eh? Gentlemen, how are your powers of persuasion tonight? for night patrol. 10-5, he attacks me just outside the town. Knocks me out. Takes the half-track. Makes a run for it through the barricade. Mike. You left the door open, John. Mike, don't do it tonight. Don't try tonight. Listen to me, you crazy con city donkey. They're waiting for you. They know. They know what? I don't know. I'm not sure. But someone came to see Fogel at the party. Who? I don't know. But they went away together. And Fogel seemed to know you were planning something. He said... He said what? He said you wouldn't be around much longer. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you ever believed anybody in your life, please... Believe me. What's going to happen when someone unties a knot that holds you together? Maybe you'll be around to pick up the pieces. Come on, John, let's get that stuff out the back way. Isn't it? Mike! Don't try it. Be with me on the plane. I'm leaving here tomorrow. Ask me tomorrow, John. We'll make it another night. It's got to be tonight. Wait, I, I may not be able to set it up again. I don't like the shape of the moon. Keep the money I gave you as a retainer. I'll look you up when I'm ready. Oh, 
go. What happened? I'll tell you later. All right, Paul, you keep me informed. You must stop the commander. A man like Vogel can be restrained only so long. Now he has some justification on his side. Where are your diamonds now, Mr. Martingale? What will this accomplish? Nothing! Except to prove that Michael is crazy and that ten men are stronger than one. Mr. Martingale, please stop for gold just for tonight and, and in the morning I will tell you where the diamonds are. What makes you think you can find out now, having failed? I knew he was going into a trap. I told him so. He thought I was lying. He knows now that I wasn't. Believe me, he will tell me now. How do I know I can trust you? I can't compete with love. <laughs> Why will I never learn that the most dangerous thing about completely unmoral women is their tremendous, unused and unpredictable reserve of honest feeling? Stop it! Now, Mr. Davis, will you tell us where the diamonds are? No? Well, we have time, Mr. Davis. We have time. Are you comfortable? Oh, madame. Yes? Mr. Martin Gale to see you, sir. I'm sorry I have to leave you, Davis. Keep an eye on my blue jacket. I'll be back. Try this one from oh, Mr. Davis. Mr. Martingale? I want Mr. Davis released, Paul. I caught Davis attempting to enter the prohibited area with sufficient equipment. So to... you told me on the telephone. I want him released. He will be released when I'm finished with him. I want him released. If you don't stop your constant interference, I will take the whole story to your directors. If he's not released in five minutes, I'll have a story of my own to tell. In every club in South Africa. The story of how a Cape Town trollop made such a complete and utter fool of our Paul Vogel that he proposed to her and was rejected. A French tramp who looked like a lady. He has a delightful accent, don't you think? It's a lie. I would have known. And Davis virtually told you, don't you remember? He spotted her right off. There's a man with a really good eye for antiques. I'm rather surprised you were so fooled. I'll stop this. we are going to see Mademoiselle Renault now. She's waiting in your office. Oh, uh, incidentally, they're in love. Pleasure of this visit? Mike Davis. He's not here. I know you have him. You also know what is happening to him? It won't do you any good. He'll never tell you where the diamonds are. Why not? He'll never get there himself. Come on, I'll follow. Mademoiselle Renault? I. I can make him tell me what you want to find out. We'll go away from here and never come back. Are you suggesting that where I may fail, a cheap Cape Town trollop could succeed? I beg you to let him go. You shall have him. When I'm through with him, you shall have him in the morning. Let me have him now. Why should I? Because if you don't, I will tell everyone about your proposal. It might be embarrassing. Are you bargaining with me, a pig? Yes. 
I am bargaining with you. Pig to pig. Release Mike Davis. Yes, sir. Tell them what they want to know and let's leave here. Yeah. Why did they let me go? I love you, Michael. Why did they let me go? Because they knew it was no use. They knew you would never tell them. How did they know I'd never tell them? Never quit. Then why? Oh, darling, I'm pleading hard. You wouldn't quit. I wake up there every day. Still, I'd crawl out of the grave to get what I came with. Let me do it. I can get through with a pen from Nightingale. I'll pretend to take John as a guide. He knows it isn't. Don't be a fool. If they ever caught you, they... Oh, if they kill you. My life stops. Sleep, darling. The doctor will be back tonight. You're in pretty good shape. For once, Vogel failed to shoot par for the course. I wonder why. By now, according to the rules, I should be floating in the bay. Maybe he was horrified at the sight of blood. Yeah. Why don't you ask Miss Renault why they didn't dispose of you? We already asked her. And uh, she didn't know a thing? What are you getting at? Nothing. This place has really made you sick. She's actually trying to help me. How? By getting the diamonds for me. Now you can figure why they let you go. Last night the girl came and told me to put you back together again. So she must know why you were released. And so do I. They want the diamonds. And they knew you'd never tell them. But a woman like her... <laughs> That's something else again. Why, oh, you're drunken. Doc. Yes? How am I? How are you? Or how are you if anyone asks me? How am I if Vogel asks? Concussion of the brain. You won't be up for some time. Thanks. Suzanne.
Keep heading north about three miles. You'll come to a low spot. Just a dried up spring, a couple of bits of brush, nothing more. Then go directly west, 50 yards. There it is. After that, head for Angola. I'll meet you. You'll be safe there. The border stops him. The rest I'll tell the John. They might search him. You're right. You sure you can do it? This is the best way, Mike. Better get back to your room now. And be careful. Don't leave that lying around anywhere. I'll see you in an hour. Forgive me for not rising. When you find what you want, I hope you will tell him why I did this. Delighted to, in detail. I want a half track and supplies, enough for 500 miles, immediately. Yes, sir. You're leaving? The plane tomorrow for Cape Town. I'd rather you stay. No need to endure the quarters at the hotel. I offer you the comforts of this department for the time I'll be gone. If on my return I have the evidence to demonstrate to Mr. Martingale how a job really should be done, I shall express my appreciation properly. Perhaps even by inviting you out again. What a mademoiselle. Take good care of her. Yes, sir. Trust a woman, Bogle. The two unstable. It's shot, Bogle. Drag his body back to the half track. You won't get far. Even if you crash through the gates, they'll be after you. Drag! Headquarters telephones that you're clear with the patrol. When do you return? I don't know. Very good, sir. from nowhere. I want you to have a little talk with your headquarters, so I won't be bothered with this thing tonight. Think up a speech quick and then turn it on and say it. 
And be sure and say the right things. This is Vogel speaking. I'm an important reconnaissance. Clear all patrols from the northwest area. I won't be in further contact. Now get out. No. No. Get out. No. Well, I'll bet that's the first time anybody shoved you around without you hitting back. So why break a precedent? Headquarters. In the half track, northeast area 26 immediately. Is that right?
Then why didn't you investigate? But you ordered all patrols out, sir. To... What do I care what I ordered? After that length of time, you should have investigated. They are ready, sir. Bring them in. Are you pleased, both of you? If either of you have any hope of joining Mr. Davis in Angola to share his wealth, I must disappoint you. You, Dr. Hunter, will be charged with seriously underestimating your patient's powers of recuperation for criminal reasons, and thus allowing him to escape. What have you got to say? Under the circumstances, a man of normal strength, you, for example, Commandant, would have been in bed for at least a week. I based my prognosis on that. But apparently, as sometimes happens, the patient was a man of considerable more than normal strength. You! Come on, Dan. And you. You will be charged with criminal treason, sending me into a trap with a counterfeit map. You won't bother to deny it, will you, Mademoiselle? No. I will not deny it. I was helping him, but apparently not in the way I thought. Oh. Dr. Hunter! Get up. Come on. Get up. Let him alone. Send in a guard. No! No! Take her. No. She's under an always under arrest for the murder of Dr. Hunter. No. I will sign the report to the Union Police. No! No! In Angola is now 2.40 in the morning. <laughs> the say must close. No more drinks. I want a drink. But the law says... I want a drink. But the law says... <laughs> Very fortunate you cannot smash a diamond that easy. May I join you? No. Thank you, sir. Oh, no. How quickly our little triumphs tarnish up. How quickly a conquest turns heavier. I'm lovely in our arms. Nobody ever did me any favors. Do you remember this little story I once told you about, about this guide? Well, there's another chapter to it now. Think it would interest you? I thought it would. <laughs> he made it. He made it into the prohibited area and out again with the diamonds. Glorious dash, glorious. And now, now he has vanished. Into thin air. Who knows? Perhaps he's here in Angola. And in fact, certain information I have leads me to believe he is, because he still faces certain obstacles, like like finding an unscrupulous person to polish the diamonds and, and disposing of them. But in all these things, if I can only locate the man, I could help him. I, I could even help him to arrange for a shipment of the diamonds in in small lots to various countries, which is what I would suggest. Oh, uh... Yes, as I foresaw, he, he left great disaster in his trail. I think I've said it before, there is nothing but suffering from contact with this hardest of all matter, glass, steel, human soul. As for the death of poor Dr. Hunter, well, he drank a little too much anyway, but I feel really sorry for Mademoiselle Renault. I just can't believe she killed him. There's no one who can prove differently. 
Oh, that a girl so beautiful should die. Signore, signore! Mr. Davis, try and remember now that you're a rich man. This violence is no longer necessary. Tell me the truth. I'm only reporting an incident. Tell me the truth. If you let me get in my inside pocket, there's a clipping. It'll, it'll verify everything. See? Read it. Mademoiselle Anacena Letta Vigneault, known also as Suzanne Reynaud, who is being held for the murder of Dr. Francis Kittredge Hunter, a diamond stud. Where did you ever learn how to read? That is what it says. It says a French tramp tried to cross up Mike Davis. Then got herself. Nobody ever did me any favors. Nobody! I think as long as you're determined to, to sacrifice this great fortune and, and go back to Diamond Stud and help the girl, I, I think I know a man who can arrange for us to make this trip quietly. Of course, I, I'll need some money. I'll get you some strong coffee. By on charm. I didn't know you did homework. I thought I felt a draft. Close that, will you, please? Michael, I can save considerable time, I think, by telling you immediately that I can never accept your proposition. You haven't heard my proposition yet. You have your diamonds. Now you want your girl. Why else would you risk coming back? I cannot do it. It's even better than that. An even trade. The diamonds for the girl. You're really in love with her, aren't you? After what she did, I got her into this and I have to get her out, that's all. I never know what to think anymore. I'm being constantly disillusioned. Has money completely lost its power? Is everyone motivated now by love? The diamonds for the girl, really, my dear Michael, she's not worth it. On the streets of Cape Stick to the point. Yes or no? It appeals to me, yes. It would make a hero of me in the eyes of the company. It would distress Fogel. No, Michael. I'm afraid I cannot buck the law. Our directors have very definite ideas on that matter. Look, let me buck the law. You stay charming. Wherever you have the diamonds, you wouldn't have them here, of course. I would be trusting you to produce them. One thing at a time. I wouldn't know where to begin. Put a piece of paper in that typewriter and get Vogel here. That would be very amusing. Come in, Paul. Well, what is it? Uh, forgive me, Paul, for getting you out at this late hour, but uh, it's time we resolve this curious situation in which we find ourselves. Couldn't this have waited till the morning? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Now, we are both responsible for the loss of the diamonds, aren't we? So, even despising each other as we do, we are obliged to protect each other to protect ourselves. That's all. Right. I've protected myself this time. Could you sign this, please? What is it? I'll read it for you. Mademoiselle Suzanne Renault, known by whatever aliases, etc., etc. Mademoiselle Suzanne Renault is innocent of the murder of Dr. Francis Kittredge Hunter. She will be released immediately, signed Paul Vogel, Commandant, witnessed Fred Martingale. Only our signatures are lacking. This is intended as some sort of joke. The humor escapes me. Let me explain it to you. Davis and Martingale. I see. Well, personally, I decided to relax. You can see that our friend is somewhat overwrought. He was here when you phoned me. Well, forgive my lack of courage, but there was a gun at my head. Sign that paper, Vogel. Marty Gale, you witness it. Speaking for myself, I have an enormous antipathy to dying. Sign it. What if we do sign? We take our chances on getting out, and you take your chances I send you the diamonds. 
You'll give us a pass, of course. I won't. She'll hang. that Mademoiselle Renault did not kill Dr. Hunter. Then who did, Vogel? Who did? Who else but you was in the room when he was killed? You just signed a confession of murder. I could prove before any court that I signed this with a gun at my throat. But if you died now? Martin is a witness. I wonder if he'd care to testify for you. I'm so sorry, Paul. You gave me the gun too late. You double tongue swine. Oh, by the way, Paul, there's something I neglected to tell you, something I think you might like to know. The report that deprived you of a district of your own. Someone else must have sent it. I didn't. Do you hear me, Paul? Hmm. He thought I'd be killed. I had faith that his first shot would be a little wild. Call your police. Go ahead. Well, now, uh, let me see. Gentlemen of the jury, I cornered the late Commandant Vogel into admitting the murder of Dr. Hunter. He signed the confession. Then he requested the courtesy of a gun and a few moments alone with it. For a gentleman, I could do no less. I gave him the gun. Then unexpectedly, he attempted to seize the confession and escape. Fortunately, I had provided myself with another gun. I'd always suspected he wasn't a gentleman, actually. Why? I don't know, really. Except that perhaps I'm a little more sentimental than I thought. Uh. Oh, very well, then. Vogel and I have been forced to trust each other. That was no good. Suppose he killed me. I took that gamble. With my life. You know, in his way, he was quite a remarkable fellow. A nasty, but remarkable. Martingale told me the original plan was to run away together. The plan's been changed. Yes, but you were willing to. I got you into something, I got you out of it. That ends it. Does it? Does it really, Mike? After what you did? Hello there! I forgot you're going away, Fred. Some of yours. Keep them for luck. John.
toady. Thank you. 